If you're putting negative 3 in for x to get your y, you're going to have 3 to the negative 3. Please remember negative exponents mean you flip the base and you make the exponent positive. So this becomes 1 over 3. I flipped the base and the 3 becomes positive, so that's 1 over 27. Okay, you only do that when the exponents are negative. So when you get down to these positive values and you plug those in, you don't have to flip anything. You just do the math, all right? And then once you get all of those, I would like for you to graph it. And then I want you to do these transformations on that graph. All right, and I'll give you a few minutes to do that, even though I've already given you like several minutes. I didn't even do anything. And I had to come around and say, give you paper and think about your Did you get these y values for your negative exponents? Yes. Let's start with that, okay? When you put 0 in for 3 to the 0, what did you get for that? 1, right? The y value is 1. <laughs> when we put 1 in, we do not stay on automatic pilot and say that this is 1 third. We do not flip with positive exponents. 3 to the 1 is just 3. And then when you put 2 in, it's 3 squared, which is 9. When you put 3 in, it's 3 cubed, which is 27. Um, I'm not going to ask you for more xy tables, probably, during this unit, um, unless we're doing a new function. The reason why I wanted you to do this here, and if you were to watch the video for this unit, um, the first day we did the exponential functions, I, I did tables for a base of 2 and a base of 1 half. But I wanted you to get the, a feel for the graph, what the behavior of exponential functions are. So like when this, when, so when we go to graph it, let me just graph it now. And I know that you may not like graphing without an actual graph. It's a little bit loosey-goosey, but just release your inner OCD person and go with it. Negative 3, 1 over 27. 1 over 27 is very small, okay? Um, so when negative 3 is about here, 127 is about there. I don't know why it's about there. Right, so I'll just, we're just going with it. Um, negative 2, 1 ninth. 1 ninth is a little bit bigger, so negative 2 is about here, and so that would make 1 ninth about here. Okay. Negative 1, 1 third is about here. And then 0, 1. So this is 1 third, 0, 1 is about here. And then we have 1, 3, about here. And here's where y begins increasing very, very rapidly. And this is an, 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 a unique characteristic of exponential function. So then we get 2 is 9, and then 27 is way up here, really, really fast, okay? So that's kind of the basic function. B, B is what here? What was the base? 3. Okay, so that, so B was 3, the base was 3. It's greater than 1. And so as x goes to infinity, y is increasing. Okay, this is all on your original notes for that day. The only difference if b was less than 1, if b was a fraction, like let's say b was 1 third, so it's less than 1, when you start doing those exponents, what basically happens is these values, 3, 9, 27, would be here, and these fractions would be here. So you'd have a graph that looks like this, only it's decreasing, okay? Because when you get those fractions, they get, the denominator gets bigger and bigger. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's the difference between increasing when b is greater than 1, decreasing when b is less than 1. And then we have transformations to do. Um, We have a x minus 2, we have a plus 4. Which one do we do first, minus 2 or plus 4? Minus 2. And the stuff that's connected to the x, what's that all about? How do I interpret that minus 2? Insiders lie. So it's a right 2. So we're going to go right 2 and then up 4. When, okay, so before I even do that, going back to this parent graph, 
I don't need you to do X, Y every time, this X, Y table. Here's what I'd like for to see on all of your graphs, these three things. I would like to see the horizontal asymptote, Y equals zero. Which is the point that is on every single exponential graph, the base function? Zero, one. I want to see this point. And then I want to see one comma what? Three, okay, whatever your base is. It's one comma B, because when you put one in for X, your Y value will be whatever your base was. It could be five to the one or two to the one, whatever your B is. So it's three in this case, okay? This one stays the same, every exponential function. This one changes depending on your base. So these three things. So then when you go to transformation stuff, Basically, if you just transform these things, you're going to be good. So I'm going right to up four. So this is going to go right to up four. I don't know. This is not to scale. I'm not even sure. And then one, three, right to up four. The horizontal asymptote also is being shifted up four. The horizontal asymptote will only transform if there's a vertical shift. Because, I mean, you can think about it moving left to right, but the left to right movement is still the same line. Okay, so any questions about any of that? All right, your quiz on Monday, well, first of all, are there any homework questions from yesterday? The good thing about yesterday's work and this work, this was from two days ago, yesterday was this, except that was the base, E, okay? So everything works the same. You're just using E, which we're approximating as 2.7. So were there any questions on yesterday's homework with the E? All right. This is the stuff that's on your quiz Monday, these three days. This is us today. This is today. We're solving exponential equations, which I love because they're like tiny puzzles. I love them. Um, but this is not on your quiz Monday, just this, this, and this. And really, these two days are the same, just this day was with E. So... That's the same stuff, and that's some other stuff, okay? And the videos are in Google Classroom, and then there's the notes and the homework keys. I mean, everything that's there and exists. Yes, you can use notes on Monday. And then we'll also do a tiny, quick warm-up Monday for the stuff I think you might need some help with, just to double, just to jog your memory. Okay. Okay, did everybody get a note sheet? Nobody short? Okay, solving exponential equations. We have these steps. I'm kind of going to read them to you, but then you're going to forget, and it won't even make any difference to you until we actually do a problem, but that's okay. Number one, write both sides of the equation in terms of the same base by using your exponent rules, which we are about to review. Step two, set the exponents equal to each other and solve. Step three, check your work. Um, the basic goal, the, basically what's going on here, here's the basic idea. If I say basic one more time, you're free to just fire me. Um, Just intuitively, if you have an equation that looks like this, and the bases are the same as they are here, what do you think is true about their exponents? 
they're equal as well. If the bases are equal, the exponents are equal. Because that would have to make sense, right, in order for both sides to have the same value. So you could essentially just drop the base and write the exponents equal to each other, right, and solve. We're not really, this isn't actually any math that's going on from here to here. It's just more of a concept. You can just now look at just the exponents and solve. The thing is that the problems I give you probably, for the most part, aren't already going to have the same base. You're going to have to manipulate it to have the same base. Then you're going to set the exponents equal. So that's the goal for today, is to look at something, rewrite it with the same base so you can set the exponents equal and solve. But before we do that, we want to review some exponent rules. And I have picked out some specific examples that I want you to write down because I've picked them out based on some things that might confuse you in your homework and warm-up problems. Um, not all of them, but some of them. So, for example, if we're looking at this rule right here, we have two things with the same base. They're being multiplied. What is this rule telling me I can do with the exponents in that situation? Add them. So if you have x squared times x cubed, what would, what would that answer be? x to the 5, right? x to the 5th, because you're doing 2 plus 3, which is x, x to the 5th. So this next rule right here, you have a power m being raised to the power n. What does it look like you can do with those two things? Multiply them. So here's an example with the base of a number. 3 to the 4th to the 5th. Please understand when your base is a number, and you're manipulating the exponents, you are just leaving the base as it is for now. Okay, you might do the math later, but when you're just following the rule, you're leaving the base as 3. And then what can I do with that 4 and 5? Multiply them. So this is 3 to the 20. Okay. Now here you might want to actually do 3 to the 20. By the way, no one wants to actually do 3 to the 20. It's really big. Um, but if you needed to do the math, that's the step you would do it in. What do you think is going on here? I have two things multiplied, a power on the outside. What does it look like? This is the same. Yeah, you kind of like distribute that power inside. So if you have something like this, how would you rewrite that? X to the fifth, Y to the fifth. Or if you had even a power inside there, if you had X squared Y, to the fifth, it's still five times that two, whatever that exponent is. That would be x to the ten y to the fifth. Like if I had like an eight right here, I would distribute the. I would have this. The eight would not be part of the power. The 8 would have to be inside here to get that power. I don't know if that's what, if that's what you're asking at all. A to the 0 equals 1, this is a general rule, okay? 5 to the 0 is 1, x to the 0 is 1, anything to 0. Here is my negative exponent rule. I'm going to show you two different forms of this. I need you to be able to recognize it both ways, okay? So the first way is the easiest one to rec recognize because when you're already given something with a negative exponent, it rings bells in your head. So if I had already given you like 6 to the negative 3, you're flipping it because this is really 6 over 1. So when you take the reciprocal of the base, it becomes 1 over 6, and that 3 becomes positive. And I would also want you to be able to do it the other way because when we're trying to solve equations and have it with the same base, we might want the negative exponent form. So like if I was, if I had, um, what did I think was good? One fifth, and I was trying to write it with a base of five, like, because I'm trying to solve one of my equations, what exponent would that be? Negative, negative one, right? Because this is really one over five to the one. So see, this is both directions. I, I need you to be able to recognize it both ways. And that last one is similar to the first one. Multiplying means you add the exponents. Dividing means you subtract the exponents. Okay. 
So I'm going to give you something a little crazy looking on that one for an example. Let's say I had this, e to the x plus 2 over e to the x. And I wanted to subtract the exponent. My question for you is in this general formula, which thing, is it the top minus the bottom or the bottom minus the top exponent? Top minus the bottom. So when I go rewriting this with one base, what am I writing first, x plus 2 or x? Okay, so top minus the bottom. And what is x plus 2 minus x? be e to the 2. And we're going to do an e problem in the next. All right, so we have a few examples, and we're going to be done. Does anybody need this up anymore? All right. So here we go. 81 equals 27 to the x. We're trying to solve for x. But first I need both sides to have the exact same base. Remember, I need, you know, like, um, like that example I gave you, 5 to the x equals 5 to the 3 or something like that. But in this case, I have 81 on the left and 27 on the right. You need to figure out a way to just rewrite those numbers so that they have a similar base. And just raise your hand if you've already figured that out in your head. Okay. In the case that you haven't, maybe your brain doesn't work like that, you can always do a factor tree. Okay. So if you get stuck at any time and you can't figure out the base, don't just sit there and be like, mm, think harder and then be frustrated when it doesn't come to you. Okay, there's something you can do about that. You do a factor tree. So a factor tree for 81 would be this. Okay, so that 81 is just all threes. How many threes are there? Okay, so that's 3 to the 4. 27 is 3 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. How many threes are there? So like I said, if it's not something that comes to you quickly, just do a factor tree. I mean, there's, an, there's no harm in that. Um, so then what I'm going to do is just rewrite 81 as 3 to the 4th. Rewrite 27 as 3 cubed. But the other thing I have to add in is that this is to the x power, the right-hand side. So on that right-hand side, following our exponent rules, what can I do with that, with these two things, the 3 and the x? Yep. So it's the same as 3 to the 3x, and this is 3 to the 4. And now here's where I can drop the base and just pick off the exponents and do what with them? Put them equal and solve. See? That's an easy equation. x equals 4 thirds. I want you to try the other problem. There's a little more going on in that problem than this one. So I will give you sort of a head start. You want to rewrite uh, with a base of 2 on each side. So before you even care about the exponents, just look at these bases. Try and figure out how to rewrite them both in terms of 2. Okay, what exponents would they need to be equivalent? forms or answers or values, blah. Well, 